Huh, looks like today we're going back to the Virtual Boy yet again. Last time I took a look at the Hyper Flash 32, a pretty ambitious flash card with a built-in e-ink display for selecting games. I definitely recommend checking that video out first, I'm honestly kinda proud of how it turned out, but also because I'll definitely be referencing it quite a bit later on. Today's video is going to be about the flash card as well, and even though it's less flashy than the likes of the Hyper Flash, I still think it's worth a look at. Since A, there's only like 3 options for Virtual Boy flash cards out there as of this video, so might as well cover the rest of the basis. And B, I've actually been sent a review unit for this video. Yes, hashtag free product but not an ad. Spoiler though, this cart isn't really a new product at all. In fact, I briefly mentioned it in my Hyper Flash 32 video. That's right, one of the first Virtual Boy Flash carts ever made, the Flash Boy Plus. Now, the Flash Boy line has been around since 2007, but new units haven't really been officially sold for a while. Until now, as Fintech 64, a company specializing in reproduction cartridges, have taken it upon themselves to reproduce the Flash Boy Plus with permission from its original creator. But why remake this old Flash card specifically when, you know, the Hyper Flash 32 exists? Well, because you can't go wrong with more options, especially ones that are more budget-friendly. While the Flash Boy Plus isn't as full-featured as the $225 US dollar Hyper Flash 32, it is less than half its price, with prices starting from $95 US dollars. Now, there is a third Flash card option between those two, being the Hyper Boy, but I'll touch on that later in the video. Either way, $95 is still a very solid price for a Virtual Boy Flash card in my opinion, despite the relative limitations. As like I said in my Hyper Flash video, a lot of the Virtual Boy's library has become increasingly hard to obtain, and at the same time, it's definitely one of those platforms where the authentic hardware experience is hard to replicate. So a Flash card goes a pretty long way for hardware purists. So without further ado, I present to you the Flash Boy Plus. Well, that's a little underwhelming. Okay, I kid. The folks at Fintech 64 were kind enough to send me a whole bunch of things to customize the cartridge with. Each Flash Boy Plus comes with one of seven different custom labels that you can choose from. Though you can also pick all of them up for 10 US dollars if you like to swap it around. Okay, what the heck is this label? And in addition to that, they've also sent over some different cartridge shells, including black and clear ones. These are actually not available on their website as of this video, the default is just grey. But I do hope they make them available as an option. Compared to the last release of the Flash Boy Plus, which used a 3D printed shell, these new shells are injection molded, which definitely adds to the overall build quality. Though they did make a few reproductions of the original shell as part of the prototyping process, which are also available for purchase separately if you really want the old design for nostalgia's sake. Otherwise, I might just try and swap in the clear shell and this official style cartridge label. I think they both look pretty good on this thing. Oh yeah, this thing has a safe battery, we'll get to that later. Okay, honestly, yeah, this looks pretty sick. If you're gonna try to look at least half as cool as the Hyper Flash 32, I think a clear shell is the way to go. There's a few minor blemishes on the back since this is most likely a prototype, but I think the guys over at Fintech 64 can definitely give this a shot. If you've noticed, the only thing that's present on this card is a single mini USB plug at the top. No micro SD slot or anything. This doesn't have a built-in menu or fancy UI to switch games like the Hyper Flash 32 does. So in order to switch games, you have to plug it into a PC. Normally, this would kinda stink. Imagine if you had to reflash a NES or SNES flash card every time you wanted to switch games. But the Virtual Boy library is small enough, and also the fact that pulling out and playing the Virtual Boy is already a bit of a commitment, that I personally find it not to be that annoying of an issue. I already play the Virtual Boy in front of my PC, so I can imagine just occasionally unplugging it to swap games, even though other solutions like the Hyper Flash 32 are definitely way cooler. Again, this is a budget option, and it's not super inconvenient in my book. The Flash Boy Plus optionally comes with a gold-plated mini USB cable for an additional price, which is cool of them to send over as well, but I imagine any other mini USB cable would work just as fine. Flashing the cartridge isn't super complex, but there are a few points to keep in mind. For total newcomers, there's even a digital manual available that's a useful reference, but overall it's pretty simple. You connect the flash card to your PC with the mini USB cable and use a dedicated app to select a Virtual Boy ROM to flash the cartridge. The catch here is that the ROM you are flashing must be exactly 2048 kilobytes in size, which is the maximum ROM size supported by the flash card. 
For ROMs that are smaller, you have to use another program to pad the file out so it fits the maximum size. It's fortunately as easy as just dragging the ROM files that need padding onto the program itself. And once you've done that once, you'll have a collection of correctly sized ROMs to swap between at any time. Most Virtual Boy games and homebrew should fit well within the 2048KB size limit, with the only exceptions really being certain pieces of homebrew, like the full version of the Street Fighter 2 Virtual Boy port. If you really want to check out larger ROMs, you can consider the premium flashcards from Retro Onyx, either the Hyper Flash 32 or the Hyper Boy. This one actually came out after my video on the Hyper Flash, and it's basically the same thing just without the e-ink display to save on costs, operating the same way the Flash Boy Plus does. It's 160 US dollars, so still a bit more than the Flash Boy, but I wanted to mention this option as well. Anyway, back to the Flash Boy Plus. Flashing a game will once again take from several seconds to minutes depending on the game. Though from my testing, it seems to take almost double the amount of time flashing a maximum sized game like Wario Land compared to the Hyper Flash 32. Once you've flashed the game, you can pop it into your Virtual Boy and it plays just like any regular cartridge would. Games can use the built-in battery for progress saving, but it is important to note that you can't read or write save files from the cartridge itself. If you have a save file for a particular game and then flash a different game that has its own save file, your previous save will be gone. And that's basically the one sour spot about this flash card. There's not a lot of Virtual Boy games where saving your progress is a necessity, but it's still nice to be able to keep saves while swapping games. And the alternative flash cards like the Hyper Flash and Hyper Boy write saves directly to an SD card, removing the need for a save battery altogether. Okay, scratch that, I have another sour spot for this flash card. For some reason, even with the grips on the back, it is very hard to pull this out of the system, even more so than the Hyper Flash. I had to basically claw the grips with both hands and struggle a bit to get it out at points. I don't know if it's the shape of the cartridge or anything in particular, but nothing about it stands out to me as being prone to getting stuck, so it's just very weird. But in the end, you can still do the same stuff with it as any other Virtual Boy flashcard, like enjoying the physically rare Virtual Boy library, as well as the homebrew and unreleased games that I did a deep dive on back in the Hyper Flash video, so I won't do that again here. Though there is something I forgot to mention last time. There is a single first-party Virtual Boy prototype game out there in the wild, that being the prototype for Galactic Pinball. Specifically, this is the demo used during Nintendo's Shoshinkai 1994 trade show, when it was still under the early name Space Pinball. Welcome to Space World. Let's go. I feel like they recorded that line specifically for the demo version because Space World is an actual event, but then they figured, hey, without context, this works in the final game too, so let's keep it in. Welcome to Space World. Let's go. Gameplay-wise, it's similar to the final product, but has different aesthetics and even has an extra fifth table. My favorite thing, though, has to be the prototype Virtual Boy logo screen that shows up at the start, matching how the pre-production Virtual Boy systems looked at the time. I would've liked it if they stuck to having the Nintendo logo on the Virtual Boy, to be honest, but it's still cool to see this early splash screen on the actual hardware through the magic of flashcards. It's like I'm actually playing on a demo unit now. But that's about it for the Flash Boy Plus. There's currently three tiers of Virtual Boy flashcards available on the market right now, and this sits nicely in the lowest tier. While it isn't as full-featured as its Retro Onyx brethren, it still stands out as the most affordable and widely available option. And for a platform as niche as the Virtual Boy, I think that is legitimately a valuable proposition. And with the Virtual Boy homebrew scene still chugging along, I'm still excited to see what the community will come up with next, perhaps even paving the way for a proper EverDrive-style flashcard in the future. For now though, I'll just sit here with my dedicated hamburgers on route to Switzerland cartridge. Now this is peak gaming.